Howdy, howdy, Chris here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about another low volume, low pressure paint gun, the AeroPro A610. This is an updated version of the R500. If you watch my channel before, you know that the R500 consumes very little air, 3.5 to 3.9 CFMs, a low CFM gun that's gonna be great for using a small compressor. So if you've got a 20, 30 gallon uh, compressor that produces about five to six CFMs, then you should be able to paint an entire vehicle with that compressor without any fluctuation or very little in your air pressure. This gun is an updated version of that. We're gonna compare it to the R500 today. Um, we're gonna test it out, spray with it. This is the gun here. As you can see, it's a different color than the R500. The R500 comes in chrome. But this has a Teflon coating on it, um, which I like, and we'll see how it holds up against solvents and how the cleanup is on this gun. Seems like it's machined very well. It fits good in my hand and it feels good. Here's the R500. It is a different design. So you can see the R500 here all smooth. This has some more intricate detail in it. They're about the same price, but this comes with three needle sets. So this comes with the 1.5, comes with the 1.7, and then it's fitted with the 1.3, which is on it now. So 1.3 is perfect for base and clear coat with this gun. Uh, we'll test out the 1.3, but if you have, you know, if you have some materials that you want to spray that are thicker materials like a epoxy coating or a high build primer, a 1.5 needle set might be perfect for that. It's kind of nice. For the same price, you get three different needle sets. You're also going to get this regulator. Now this is a you know, it's got a plastic cover on it, so I'm not sure how well this will hold up. I haven't had really good luck with these cheap, inexpensive regulators, but we're gonna, you know, put it to the test today. We'll use this today. You also get a tool kit, just an inexpensive tool kit and a pipe cleaner to clean the gun. And then you also get just a cheap plastic 600cc cup. Now we don't use these cups, we use the disposable mixing cups. Uh, this uses the same adapter as the R500. This is a Harbor Freight adapter here for the Series 1 PPS system. So this part number I believe at Harbor Freight is 57702 or 707. It is hard to find this adapter in the 3M uh, original 3M adapter. It's the number two legacy series. So if you're looking for it online, look for the number two legacy series, series one adapter. That's what will fit on this AeroPro A610. Let's go out in the garage. We've got something set up to paint. A powder blue Chevy Spark. So let's get out in the garage. We'll give it a squirt and we'll see what kind of finish we get off this gun. Today we'll be painting this 2022 powder blue Chevy Spark. Now this had some light front end damage that we repaired the radiator support, some other bracketry, we replaced the hood and the left fender. And I painted those parts off the vehicle because of some time constraints. So what we're doing today is we're gonna be doing the blend panels. We're gonna be blending into this right fender, the left door and the left A pillar. So we have this all masked off and the first thing we wanna do is to wash this. We're using some wax and grease remover and a clean microfiber towel to wipe this down. The paint we're using today is the Nason XL. So I called up my local O'Reilly's. They mixed me up the factory formula to this vehicle. I cut in some parts and the color was just too far off for a blend. So what I did is I had them come back out with their scan tool, exalt a scan tool and they scanned this color and it came out perfect. So we're dialed in and ready to go. So what I'm gonna do here today is I'm gonna spray the base color with the R500, the original R500, and then we're gonna do the clear coat with the A610 or the updated version of the R500. This is just gonna give me a good opportunity to compare these two guns in real time so I can give you guys the best information possible, but I'm 99% sure these are the same exact gun the look has just been updated on the AeroPro A610. Because there's a lot of little intricate areas in this bumper cover to be sanded and prepped out for clear, we're gonna go ahead and use this U-Pole number four. This is an adhesion promoter. It's just gonna be an insurance policy to make sure everything gets good adhesion and we don't have any peeling clear. I'll start with the front bumper and we'll blend both ends of this bumper so they match the fender when we mount it. I like to start by getting a good wet coat right on the edge so we know that's covered and then we'll start blending it out into the rest of the bumper. 
I'll do the same with the front door here and the A pillar. The first couple inches, I'll get it nice and wet and then we'll start blending out into that door. And I do that by doing kind of a cross pattern down and then we'll go up. I do that so I don't have a straight line through my blend. I feel like it's a better transition if I spray at an angle. I'm using the original R500 and I purchased this through Spray It. It's a Spray It 33,000, but it doesn't really matter because a bunch of different companies make this and it's widely available on Amazon. I have links in the description if you're interested. We've got our air pressure set at 15 PSI. We, need, we, we don't need high air pressure when we're spraying base coat. I feel like it's always better to go with a lower air pressure when you're spraying your base coat. The reason for that is if you got too much air pressure when you're doing your blend, some of these pastels like this pastel blue or the nardo gray or some of those co solid colors or even metallic, if you have too much air pressure, you're gonna atomize that color too much. And when you do your blend, you'll get a modeling effect or in this case, you get a color difference in your blend area. I ran into that problem here when I was blending the door. Now, I was able just to tack rag it off and it's basically just a dusting and you can wipe it off. Just something you wanna be aware of and look out for. So always use a little bit less air pressure when you're spraying your base coat. Here I'm using my sunlight to inspect the blend. We're also looking for any dust that we wanna remove before we apply our next coat of base. Tips from this section. Use low air pressure when you're spraying your base coat. The same volume, I'm doing three turns out from closed on my volume. You wanna inspect the panel between coats of base. You wanna wait 10 minutes in between coats. If you have a particle of dust in your base, remove it before you start clear coating. And you can do that by hand with a fine sandpaper like 600. The U-Pull Clear we're using today mixes up four to one, so we'll find our four to one mixing ratio at the bottom of our disposable cup. We are gonna use the slow activator today because it's a little bit of a warmer day and I want that clear coat to flow out a little bit better. We'll add our clear coat and then we'll add our one part of activator and we'll be ready to spray. I've got the AeroPro R500 all clean, set up, and ready to go. Make sure you clean your gun before you start spraying your new gun. Now, the one thing about this AeroPro, it does not have a mark on the fluid volume. I went ahead and marked it, and I'm turning it three turns out from close. That's where I like to start with this low volume, low pressure R500, and I can adjust that up from there if I need to. Now, as far as my air pressure, I know that this gun sprays best at about 30 PSI. The technique I like to use with this gun is I move at a pretty quick pace, a little bit closer to the panel, about four inches away. And I feel like that gives me really good results. Now, there's a lot of different techniques you can use when you're spraying down clear. You have to find what works best for you. Experiment with it, experiment with your air pressure and your fluid volume, and understand how those work together to give you that flat looking finish. After the first coat of clear, I'm really happy with the results. It's not absolutely perfect. There's a little, few little particles of dust, and it's not totally smoothed out yet, but we're applying one more coat. We let it flash off for 10 minutes, and now we're applying our second coat. I'll spray it the same distance on this coat, but I'm gonna slow down just a little bit and what that's gonna do is allow more material to land on that panel and, give, and help it to flow out just a little bit better and that's gonna give you a flatter looking finish. It's important to understand that even if you don't change any of your settings while you're spraying, just by changing your speed and your distance to the panel, you can affect how that clear coat lays down and you can make a lot of adjustments just by doing that. I want you guys to experiment with that as you're painting your vehicles or doing test panels, experiment with not changing your settings, just changing your speed and distance and see how that clear is affected by it. Let me know if a dedicated video to this topic will help you down in the comments below. I continue to be impressed with how well this R500 performs. I can't say anything negative about it. I was thinking about anything I don't like about this particular gun and there's really no drawbacks to it. This is the absolute best gun for a DIYer, a hobbyist, someone do, working out of their garage or at home. So many benefits to it. You can use it with a small compressor. It produces less overspray. You're gonna save in materials. And all those things are very important when you're working out of your garage in an open garage. You don't want a bunch of overspray. It, 
anytime you can limit the amount of overspray, that's a game changer. It's a really affordable option at around $70 and with the 1.5, the 1.7 needle set, this gun can do anything you need it to do on your project, whether you're spraying primer, sealer, high build epoxy, or base or clear coat. So I have three of these guns now. I have the Aero Pro, I have the Spray at 33,000, I have the Eastwood LT100. All of these guns are the R500, they're the same gun, they're branded differently. They're all made by a company called Rongpeng, R-O-N-G-P-E-N-G. -E Rongpeng is the company that manufactures these guns and then distributes them to different brands. If you use this gun, give the community some feedback by letting us know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you're interested in this paint gun or any of the tools or products I use, check out my links down in the description. But take a look at this finished paint job. Beautiful looking flat finish. We've got a few little particles of dust that we'll take care of and this will be ready to go. Listen, if you found this video helpful, consider subscribing to the channel. If you want to learn more about paint body repair, check out one of these videos now. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time on Garage Noise.